At this point, you have downloaded and installed Android Studio. When you develop for Android, or any other language for that matter, you use an SDK, or a software development kit. The SDK contains all the bits you need to develop applications for Android, and each version of Android has a separate SDK version for it. So if you want to use the latest features provided by Android, you have to make sure that you are using the latest version of the SDK. Also, having the latest version of the SDK ensures that you have the fixes for any annoying bugs that may be present in an older version. In addition to the SDK, Android also has a set of build tools. These tools are used by Android Studio to compile your source code and convert it to a binary file that can be run on a, de a device. You need to keep your build tools up to date as well since Android Studio uses these build tools to create the final application. Sometimes our particular version of Android Studio will rely on a specific version of build tools being present, so it's always a good idea to keep the build tools and SDK up to date. To get started, launch Android Studio. When we first start up Android Studio, you'll notice a welcome screen. This screen allows you to do a variety of options with projects such as opening projects, creating new ones, working with source control, and etc. Notice at the bottom of the screen, there's a drop-down marked Configure. When I click it, I get some more options. An important one is the Check for Updates option. Android has frequent updates, and that it is possible that while Android Studio itself may be up to date, there may be some updates to the Android SDK or build tools that you'll need. Another option is the SDK Manager. This allows you to install a particular version of the SDK. Let's give that a click. Okay, here you can install additional SDKs for different Android versions by checking the relevant boxes under SDK Platforms. Checking the Show Package Detail checkbox shows a breakdown of the packages available for each SDK. Next, let's check out the SDK Tools tab. This is where you can see the currently installed build tools and update them. Let's get out of this by clicking the Cancel button. Now let's create a new project. Click Start a new Android Studio project on the welcome screen. Set the application name to TimeFighter, the company domain to timefighter.raywinderlich.com, and select the location for the project on your hard drive. In my case, I'm just going to use my desktop. Check the Include Kotlin Support checkbox. This is important if you want to develop using Kotlin. Click Next to get to the Target Android Devices screen. This screen is where you set the minimum supported SDK version for the phone and tablet, Wear, TV, and other Android supported platforms. The SDK version you set here will set up what's supported by your app. Notice the By Targeting API X, your app will run on N% percent of devices text. The newer version of the SDK, the fewer devices you'll have running that version, but you'll get the newer features. Also notice the Help Me Choose link. Clicking that link gives you more information about the features available for each SDK platform. You can click on each SDK version in that screen to see the feature list. You have to balance the features you want against supporting the most number of devices. If it isn't already selected, select the API 16 Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, and then click Next. The Activity screen determines the template for the default activity in your app. An activity is a way to display content and to let the user carry out actions. The screen allows you to select templates for commonly used types of activities, but you could select something like a basic activity or an empty activity and add controls to customize the activity to look any way you want. Select Empty Activity and click Next. You'll use the default values here, but if you want, you could customize the name of the activity and the name of the layout here. But don't worry, you'll learn about layout soon enough. Click Next and then Finish. At this point, you will see the basic project components being created and the initial project being compiled. You'll see references to Gradle. Don't worry too much about it yet. You'll learn more about Gradle soon enough. You might also see an error message such as following in the event log at the bottom of Android Studio, depending on your Android Studio setup. For example, you might see failed to find target with hash string Android-26. If you see this error message or something similar, 
that probably means you don't have the necessary Android SDK version installed. For example, if you selected API 16 as the minimum supported version and you don't have the SDK for API 16 install, you'll get an error.